Hello and welcome to Let's Invest, a show for amateur investors who believe that diversification is garbage and that the largest returns come from focused portfolios and understanding your bets. In this episode of Let's Invest, we will be talking about three sectors with potential for massive growth in the next 10 to 50 years. The purpose of this video is to highlight these industries to establish a starting point on where we would like to invest. This allows us to narrow down our focus to just a few areas to study and become very familiar with. Because here on Let's Invest, we do not concern ourselves with the hot new trending stocks or the tempting and risky investments that overly optimistic speculation can lead us to, causing us to mistakenly place too much faith on an asset too quickly and potentially get demolished in the end. So, the, the, the sectors I'm talking about are first, technology, specifically biotech and decentralized or secure internet services. Second, green or sustainable energy, specifically wind, solar, and biomass. And third, agriculture. This could be any number of fertilizer, machinery, or systems producers, real, uh, real estate, and yes, cannabis companies. Uh, they fit in here too. If you are only interested in one of these industries, skip to the time shown on the screen right now. While it might seem pretty apparent that these industries are the industries of the future and that I'm just stating the obvious here, look at your long-term portfolio. How many of your assets fit into one of these industries? Or better yet, how many fit in an industry that you have no idea whether or not it'll be around in 50 years. Like you can't even make a, a prediction that far for this industry. Uh, it becomes too tempting often uh, due to short-sighted greed and excitement to sell our long moderate growth assets and attempts to multiply our wealth quickly in a company that we really don't understand. Okay, so the first industry is technology. The reason I chose technology as a category in general is because it's the most obvious. Uh, however, it's also incredibly risky to invest in many tech companies as compared to a stable agricultural company. Uh, that is, if you don't understand it thoroughly. Warren Buffett has said many times that he doesn't invest in technology because while it is a humongous industry with assured potential for growth, he cannot simply wrap his head around the whole thing. Uh, the supply and demand of technology also just change too fast and you have to keep up with it. But if you are one to follow a single part of the industry and can identify one or two companies that you fully understand and believe offer something more than any other company around them, then you can invest in what you already know and have a huge edge on the rest of us. I know very little about biotechnology and I'm not really interested in studying the hundreds of companies that show up on a Yahoo Finance screener for healthcare technology and services in order to get a good feel for the demands. I also don't know much about semiconductors like, for example, uh, advanced micron devices. It's not like I can't explain to you what an AMD graphics card is good for. I just don't understand the computer industry's supply and demand for them. I don't understand everything that goes on under the hood, essentially, in the industry and the, between the competition and stuff like that. I do, however, understand blockchain-based technology, and I'm actively studying cryptocurrencies and blockchain-based services like Chronobank. So if you are looking for videos on those topics, hit that subscribe button and expect them from Let's Invest in the Future. Now onto my very favorite category, the green energy industry. With the world population growing, fossil fuel supply supposedly running out, fear of long-term effects of, po of pollution, and the ever-cheapening of wind and solar power generation systems, it is quite clear to me that this is a, or an industry largely supported by both the people and most governments. This industry should be quite easy to understand because there are not many players involved in the game and the supply and demand is very clear to most. 
A supply and demand is this simple. Windmill makes power, company sells power, I need power. Also another good thing is the, co uh, the contracts for wind, solar, and biomass producers are often well over 10 years long, giving the companies who produce renewable energy a very stable flow of revenue. It is my belief now that if one can identify a few green energy companies to invest in in the next five years, when the price is right that is, they stand to make potentially dozens of times on their investment, assuming they have done their homework. This being my favorite industry for long-term growth on the basis of my personal understanding of it, I can assure you there will be detailed videos on these green energy opportunities in the future. Lastly is arguably the most essential sector to have ever existed to serve mankind. It is the agriculture sector. This is a simple pick because people will always need to eat and many products are made from plant fibers and plant materials. Now this is a very large industry but it's also fairly easy to understand for most parts uh, for the average amateur investor such as myself. The goal here is not to find something that will be around in 50 years because I think it's safe to say that we will, be st that we will still be growing corn and using machinery to harvest it in 2100. The goal here is to narrow our focus onto a few companies or just one idea that the whole industry will demand. That idea, product, or whatever is going to either improve the service, uh, improve or service the whole industry. I'm personally interested in innovative companies that produce products that every farmer or manufacturer of crops wants to use. I'm going to use the cannabis industry for example here because while it's very hot right now and I normally don't uh, recommend you know hot stocks things like that uh, it's there's a, still a massive upside if you can find one company uh, that's no name overlooked it seems to have a great game plan uh, to service the industry and it's the best example I could honestly think of right now so Upon massive legalization, there will undoubtedly be hundreds of dispensaries and greenhouses built. Everyone and their grandma will want a piece of the pie, uh, creating tons of competition for both customers and low prices. However, it is very difficult to determine which ones of these uh, dispensaries and greenhouses, growers, whatever, to invest in. On the other hand, it's very easy to see that they will all need tools, watering systems, soil, fertilizer, packaging, and so much more, whether most dispensaries or greenhouses go bankrupt in a year or never. They will always need fertilizer for their plants and bottles and bags to sell their product in. As Mark Twain once said, during the gold rush, it's a good time to be in the pick and shovel business. With all that said, I hope this information gets you thinking in terms of the big picture so that you can make a reasonable investing choice based on a solid foundation of understanding and not speculation. So, let's invest.